pretty extensive. Sem conhecer parar não existe. Não tem essa opção. Vamos continuar. My father's been incarcerated. It grew the chip that was on my shoulder. He may as well come meet me. They'll come tell me and say, "Hey, your son is going to be a champ one day." It's a moment that I would never forget for the rest of my life. Josh used MMA as a tool for sobriety, and it worked really well until it didn't. Josh, the man, passed away three years ago, and we've started a foundation in his honor. We're continuing the story that he would be wanting to tell. We got to mention City Kickboxing Gym, Eugene Bam, and the man is architecting this ridiculous rise of athletes from this region. This unfinished business. All my guys want to win a belt. Montana and Mark De La Rosa will become the first husband and wife to fight on the same card in the UFC. Oh, big right for De La Rosa! My family is everything. I couldn't do it without them. Glendale Fighting Club here with Edmund Shabazian. We've always known that he's like a once-in-a-generation special fighter. Oh, wow! I'm here to be the best that I can be. So the first time I saw Anderson Silva fight was when he fought Chris Lieben, and I knew a little bit about Anderson Silva, not a ton. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. Go back to your corner. Let's start. I had no idea who the guy was, and at the time, Chris Lieben was smashing people. It was hard to imagine how Anderson was going to beat Chris Lieben. Nobody had ever heard him. Nobody had ever knocked him down. After he gets in there with me and I knock him out, he may, he may want to go back to Japan or somewhere where the competition's a little easier. I was there, I was there front row, and I thought, oh, I don't know, I think you might live to regret those words, Chris. My good head kick. Oh, Chris Lehman drops. And Lehman goes down. Turns out Anderson hits a little harder than most guys. Oh, he is in big trouble. Chris Lehman goes That's down it. again. The debut of Anderson that Silva is last less than one minute. When he destroyed Lehman, I said, man, if you keep destroying people like that, nobody's going to want to fight you. He was like, oh, I hope not. I, I want to fight. I need to make money. That's what I was talking about. This is a different kind of striker. So Anderson went on quite a run after Chris Lieben. Anderson Silva against Rich Franklin. Middleweight championship is on the line. Rich Franklin, who spent years here, made it to the top of the world. It looked like it was his first day. Damage oh, to the face. Caught him again. Franklin's in trouble. Rich is in trouble. Silva. Another Silva. Knee to the head. Anderson Silva is lethal. If you want to talk about highlights from Anderson Silva, when I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Vitor Belfort. You've never seen Vitor Belfort fight before. He can change the course of a fight in a split second. Oh! In front, takes him in the face! Anderson Silva remains the Are middle champion! Man. He definitely did a good job being innovative with his striking. Let me tell you something. Not only is that the first time I've ever seen anybody knock a guy out with a front kick in MMA, in any contact sport. I've only seen that in a video game. Anderson Silva was the big one for a long time. So fighters like emulated him. Oh my goodness! It is over! What's crazy is this is after the Anderson Silva fight, which was the first front kick knockout we ever watched. Look at that front kick. The exact same shot that we saw Vitor Belfort get hit with by Anderson Silva. Straight up the middle. Oh. Ball of the foot. Reminds me of Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva's been an inspiration for generations. The movement is it's ridiculous. so smooth yeah. on his feet. His footwork. He was a Jedi. He was like the enlightened master of MMA. Oh, Silva dancing around. Oh, my. Got us thinking he wasn't even human. Dude's from a movie, man. Talk about a guy who can intimidate you without even being in there. Anderson had that. He is so above and beyond everyone else he's fought against. It seems like he's fighting in a different dimension. But he was the Medusa. He turned opponents to stone, right? Any flinch, any fake, it's just to get a guy to pause. He wants you to kind of come forward and come get me. He's baiting you. He's setting traps for you. Anderson Silva has but that's the thing about Anderson. That's why he was such a massive star in mixed martial arts, because people love finishes. And Anderson could always provide a finish at any moment. 
One more brilliant performance by the greatest martial artist of all time. He made the top guys in the world look easy just over and over and over and over again. Anderson, he will be talked about for decades. Let's get this straight. For a handful of years, no one can come close to him. He was the baddest fucking dude on the planet. Travis Luter's got a hold of him. This is exactly what he wanted. This is bad for Patrick. He's got his back. Big trouble for Coach He's got it completely locked up. And it is a Travis Luter is the ultimate fighter. Travis, congratulations. You are the winner. And more importantly, you get a shot at Anderson Silva. Travis Sluter has a significant advantage on the ground. He's a great wrestler. He's got fantastic jujitsu. Oh, there it is. Flying knee. And he's had some great success over guys with similar styles to Anderson Silva. I thought I had a very good chance of beating him because of my wrestling, and I had really good jujitsu. I took him down. I passed his guard. I mounted him. Now he's mounted. Oh. You know, I thought I was going to knock him out. But he's tough, you know, it's like I saw his eyes roll back. I hit him again, his eyes popped open, and he was he was good to go. Maybe if I wouldn't have hit him again, he would have stayed asleep. But I took him down in the second round. Nice double double leg, leg. Drives through. Down again. And then he got up kicked. Nice up kick. Triangle, triangle choke. He's triangle choke. Can he get looter? You know, and then it was like, man, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. He's got it in nice and deep. And that flash of an instance is like, man, what if I fucking piss myself or shit myself in, on live TV here? He's trying to push that elbow aside to get it even tighter. And I ended up tapping. Wow. Travis Luter tapped, and Anderson Silva is victorious. You know, I've regretted it ever since. I should have just taken my ass beat is what I should have done. At the time, the UFC had bought Pride. I held two different belts at 205 pounds and 185. I was a double champ at the time, so I came over and started with title fights right away in UFC. Dan Henderson is a tough as nails veteran who's been around forever. Dan Henderson stands out as a huge threat. Champion against champion in tonight's main event of the evening. The first round started about how I wanted to do. Big clinch and, and a takedown. Take Took him down once I got a hold of him and stayed on top the rest of the round. Phenomenal first round for Henderson. In the second round, I remember getting in the clinch with him. Instead of doing what I could to keep him there, I just kind of decided to take a little breather. and. He caught him with a big knee! Once we were out in the open, I, I remember catching a, a nice little knee to the face. Henderson's in trouble! I think I recovered a little bit. I had hand control as I was trying to get up, and I lost his hand. And next thing you know, he was on my back uh, choking me right at the end of the round. Dancing 20 seconds deep 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 trouble. Deep He's deep tapping! Deep That was one of his strengths, was being able to finish guys when he got them hurt. Thank you. True champion. Thank you. He did a good job against me doing that, for sure. I, I said it before, and I'll say it again. Anderson Silva is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Anybody who tries to debate that is out of their mind. One of my training partners um, came running over to the gym and said, it's an emergency, you have to take this call. And my manager was saying, you're not going to believe who we fought, going on and on and on fighting. I'm like, dude, tell me who I'm fighting already. Just give me a name. I could tell someone's big, and he goes, Silva. I'm like, oh, we got Vanderlei. I'm like, awesome. Never in a million years did I think it was going to be Anderson Silva. So when he told me that's who it was, I was completely blown away, and it's nothing I saw coming. Anderson Silva, the UFC middleweight champion, is about to fight at 205 for the first time inside the octagon. Getting the opportunity to fight that guy on such a big stage sometimes doesn't seem real. That was one of the first times that an actual current champion was going into a different division to test the waters. So it was a big deal him doing it. What Silva likes to do is he likes to feel his opponents out and then open up about a minute in. 
My coaches did tell me not to throw a single kick the whole first round, and it's exactly what I did. I went out there and threw a kick, and he made me pay for it. And Irvin's in trouble already. That's Silva it. trying to finish it. It's done. It is all over. And then I remember waking up on the ground, looking at my hands, and blood was just pouring out of my face. His eyes leaking like a faucet right now. I think it had more to do with Anderson Silva setting me up. He backed away from me, and he very slowly switched his stance. Not like a normal quick switch, he slid his leg back, and I think that was a trap of his. And it's exactly when I went in, I fell for it. I didn't listen to my coaches, and I was out before I hit the ground. James Irvin still can't get up, he's struggling. I think it was 15 or 16 stitches I have right across my cheek right here. I think it's, one of my, it's my favorite scar I have. Any mistake you make, he makes you pay. Especially so knowing that I got it from that guy. Dana White say to you about your upcoming fight with maybe pushing the pace? Well, they wanted a big, slow guy to follow Anderson around and make him look real good. <laughs> and they're like, Forrest is a big, slow guy. He takes a beating well. Oh, I'll get him to do it. He's stupid. <laughs> and, uh, I'll do all right. I don't worry about it. Quick technicians that are good counter fighters are like my nemesis. So, I mean, I was hoping never to fight Machida. He's getting teed off on. He's down. He's down. And then, you know, I got uh, Anderson, which is actually worse. Styles make fights, and this is the perfect stylistic matchup between a very technical, masterful striker and a wild madman in Forrest Griffin. Are you ready? The worst thing you can do against a guy like Anderson Silva is just charge in and try to land big shots on him. That's, that's his dream opponent. Wow, he's standing right in front of him. I was obviously nervous, and I just started throwing fucking hammers at nothing. And then he, he catches me. Oh, oh, down goes Griffin! It's the ones you never see that hurt you, and I never saw any of them coming. That's what happens when a guy like Forrest fights a guy like Anderson. And then you can tell, like, I don't really kick him off of me. I just kind of let him stand over me. I hate that when fighters do that. Just let a guy stand over you. Kick him. Kick him off you. Kick his knees. If you accidentally kick him in the groin, eh. Look at him. He's giving him his hand. <laughs> oh, man. I get up and again, what do I do? I tap his glove and, like, acknowledge, like, oh, OK. You want me to get up? Sure, I'll get up. Wherever you want me, man. You do what you want to do. Forrest looks so tentative and so slow. So immediately you think about it, he's literally telling me what to do. And you think about that mentally. He's telling me, hey, I'm, I want you to move this way, so I'd move that way, you know, and, and that's, uh, just never do that. And again, Anderson Silva wow. has knocked out Boris Griffin. Wow. That's a walking away right jab. And that's what makes Anderson Silva so good, is a lot of times he's just doing fundamental things to you that you've learned. He just does them faster and at a speed and distance that you can't quite gauge in time. I love Forrest Griffin, but this is one of the most embarrassing knockouts I think we've ever seen. So here's what happens when you got a guy like Anderson. Uh, there's definitely that or He's untouchable. He, you don't see him bleed. You barely see him sweat. Uh, guys are afraid to fight him, as they should be. So you want to be the next in line for the 185-pound title? I think we just, he's always had that. This isn't a fight that's going to be tit for tat. People say, Chael, you're getting ready for war. Guys, this isn't going to be a war. This is going to be a one-sided pounding, and I'm swinging the hammer. First time I was going to fight Anderson Silva. There was great buildup for this fight, right? Nobody knew how to do a fight. No, nobody did. I saved Anderson's job. Uncle Dana was going to give him his walking papers, and I begged him, keep him around. You know, I've been calling this guy out for four years, and he still doesn't want to fight me. My big thing with Anderson was never a confidence that I could go beat him, ever. I never had, I'm not a bully. If I knew I could beat him, I wouldn't have wanted to fight him. But I knew I could go compete with him, and I knew I wasn't going to will. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the pre-funk of Anderson Silva's retirement party, hosted by yours truly tomorrow night. You look at Anderson Silva, and you wanted to construct an opponent to beat him. You want a world-class athlete wrestler. That is Chael Sonnen. And Chael Sonnen has been motioning to Anderson, calling him to get in here. So the ref finally said, are you ready? Are you re am I ready? Are you kidding me? Say go. Oh, he him. rocked him. He hurt him. He's bringing it as promised. I respected what he could do on his feet. I wasn't interested in contesting it there. And Chael Sonnen is one of the very best in the world at grinding and beating guys up from the top position. Oh, oh my! 
won national championships as a wrestler. He's never wrestled before. This is simple math. And he's down again. Takes him down again. Big oh. shot again. I'm going to throw him down and beat him up. I'm going to do it for 25 minutes until he gives up. Back on the feet for the start of round three. And as the fight kept going, I had a major urgency to take him down. And that's the kind of stuff that Chael Sonnen does. He's never going to let you rest. There was never a point in that fight where I felt comfortable. I mean, there was never a point in the fight where I thought, okay, this one's a lock. Chael's got him over. Reversal. I do remember certain positions. I was, okay, I'm glad we're here. He's got to be careful all the while, though, of submissions from the bottom. Anderson is capable of throwing those arms up. And I never felt like he was a big threat from the bottom, but I never dismissed it. I never relaxed in that fight. Another round for Chael Sonnen in the books. This is 4-0, in my opinion. So I'm going into the fifth round, and I'm just telling myself, I got to get him down. Oh, he tagged him! Again, he got him! I can take him down one time, he will never get up. I mean, is it too early for Chael to start celebrating? And towards the end of the fight, he, he started to set up a triangle. Triangle, watch out! Triangle, this is trouble! And um, I just didn't react to it. He's got his legs across, that's what's it. He's tapping! It is all over! I just didn't see a lot of that offense from him early in the contest. And I wasn't doing anything different in the last round than I was in the first four. Whether he was saving something, or whether he just had never fully committed to something and, until he went for that triangle, we'd have to ask him. He brought the fight like no one has ever done before. Final score was, I hit him 311 times, he hit me 11. But I will tell you, those hurt, man. He never touched me once that didn't matter. I had stitches on both sides of my head. Wow, that's nasty. We were elbow this side, elbow this side, cut, cut. He kicked me one time in the leg. It slowed me down for a week. Nice leg kick by leg Anderson. Kick. Every part of his body was very sharp, and he just didn't really have a way to touch me that didn't affect me. We both left with the same damage. I gotta, I gotta give him that credit. The fight that happened tonight is the stuff that makes legends, you know? This guy got roughed up and beat up for five full rounds, but finds a way to win. You either get your hand raised or you don't, and I didn't. And, and that's it, and I'll live with it. But I'm devastated. All I wanted to do after I fought Anderson was fight him again. You know, and that's a very tough spot to get to. But at the same time, Anderson and I had separated ourselves from the pack. Everybody understood it's you two, and you're gonna end up back in there sooner or later. How much more dominant could Chael Sonnen actually be? He brutalized him for over four rounds. Is Steven Seagal in his corner? He, he is. Oh my goodness. Maybe we'll see some Aikido tonight, ladies and gentlemen. My big problem going to the second fight is I lost respect for him in the first fight. Protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch that, do it. First fight was one of the easier fights I've ever had. I've never had a 10-8 round in my life. I had two 10-8 rounds in one fight. Again, Sonny pushes forward. I've never gone into a fight confident. It's never happened. Except for the second fight with Anderson. I'm in here with a bum. Look at that. Chael will give him no space, Joe. And now Anderson starting to throw the strikes. I didn't have that same urgency. I didn't have that same fear of Anderson. I didn't have that same respect of Anderson. That is an early turning point in this fight. That's a knee. When I went down, I remember seeing him, and I remember his eyes. They were surprised I was down, and he gave me a moment to get up. And I elected to stay there. That was my choice. Looking to finish the fight. Chance in trouble. Hit hands Generally, when a guy is better than everybody else, he's not tougher because he doesn't need to be. You only need to be one of the two. You be tougher than everybody, you can be the champion. You be better than everybody. The guy's never two. He's never both of them. He doesn't need to be. That was what I had wrong about Anderson. And he's getting beat up like we've never seen before. I appreciate his skills, but so what? I respect his heart. I respect a guy that will hang in there. I respect a guy that will come back. Triangle, watch out. Triangle. That was something I didn't know about him. I knew he was a good fighter. I didn't know he was a tough guy. I'm on a fishing boat in the Pacific Ocean. We're poaching lobsters. It's at night, too. We're cooking them up right there on the boat. Melting butter and everything. And I get a call from Dana White. I have scuba gear on and everything that says he wants me to fight Anderson Silva in a couple weeks. And right there, off the fishing boat, I, I accepted that fight. I don't know if you heard I got called up to fight Anderson Silva. I need all the help I could get, so. I've got some I, great advice. Have you seen where I fought him? Yes, I did. Do not do that. <laughs> do the opposite of what I did. Boom. You know, I'm just hoping to God Seagal's not in his corner for this fight. I mean, you don't have a chance if he is, let's be honest.
the fight was uh, down in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So that was awesome. Good underhooks by Anderson. Now Anderson has double underhooks. I'm in there with the Michael Jordan of the sport. It's a big moment. Elbows, short punches. Really, my plan was to not fight him um, the way he wanted to fight me and, and kind of make it in his face. Bonner staying right in his face. Uglier, get off strikes, clinch him, look for takedowns. Anderson went back to the cage. He's standing there on the cage on purpose. Just don't give him the range and let him get comfortable. That shows what disdain he has for Bonner's skills. I took his counter right hand. Counter. You know, his good punch that he puts people away with was nothing. You would think if Bonner has a chance, the only way is that Anderson stands in front of him and lets Bonner tee off on him, and that's exactly what he's doing. Look up at the clock and, oh my God, 30 seconds left. And the thought went through my head that this isn't that bad, I got this. So that was my mistake and he made me pay. No matter how much heart you have, you get a jump knee from Anderson Silva in the solar plexus and you're going fetal. And Bonner crumples under one brilliant blow by the master. That's Anderson, he finds that, that tiny little window and then boom, fight's over. One more brilliant performance by the greatest martial artist of all time. I thought at the very least I'd give him a chael type of fight and lose like Rocky and I had a great promo to cut afterwards in Portuguese. So yeah, yeah, if there's one, you know, when I look back on big regrets in my life, it's, I didn't get to cut that promo. What were you getting back? Nah, too late. Everybody knows who Anderson Silva is, so it's a huge fight. The goddamn guy in Starbucks knows who Anderson Silva is. February 27th, I will put his career to bed. Make no mistake. Now a fight that's had us anticipating it from the moment it was announced. Michael. Dane is an awesome guy, but he doesn't usually bring me on Christmas Eve to wish me Merry Christmas. Anyway, after a, a discussion, he tells me I'm fighting Anderson Silva. And I was just elated. I'd always wanted to fight him. And of course, you know, he wasn't the champ anymore. But still, for me... It is the biggest fight outside of a title fight right now. I mean, I'd never fought for the belt. And to fight Anderson Silva, this, this was it. This was my world title fight. To be honest, I think it may even be a bigger fight than a title shot because being the UFC middleweight champion, in my opinion, is not nearly as impressive as beating Anderson Silva at any point in his career. It's these early rounds that Anderson Silva is the most dangerous when he's as unpredictable. He's not showed his card, he's not showed his game. Yeah, he's a dick. Oh! He's a dick. Anderson Silva, when you fight him, is a dick. Good head movement again from Anderson Silva. In fact, when we fought... They're good shots from Bisping! One of the main things was not allowing Anderson to play his mind games. Silva looking to embrace the counts, having absolutely none of that. Hey, it was your round. You're still at the end, all right? Don't let him, don't let him bait you into bullshit. So, obviously, you've got to be careful with Anderson. He's a very tricky customer. Good, consistent work again for Michael Bisping. I'm finding my range well. I'm landing shots. Oh, and again with nice. that tuck. Anderson goes down for a second. But again, this is how good Anderson Silver is. I drop him with a left hook, and then as I'm going in to, to pound on him, he hits me with a cheeky little up kick. And you don't see that. That's how inventive, creative, and that's how good his reflexes are. Here comes the onslaught of Anderson Silva. Michael's lost his mouth guard, but Anderson Silva does not care. So my mouthpiece gets knocked out, right? And I know you Americans all say that we have fucked up teeth, but regardless, mine are pretty good and I want to keep hold of them. So I stop and I turn and I go, ref, my mouthpiece. And I think, shit, I have got Anderson Silva to deal with. So as I look back, I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, jump in Michael At goes the end, down. But that is the buzzer. It was a beautiful knee, God bless him. Drops me like a sack of potatoes. And uh, I'm on the floor looking like shit. My face has exploded. I'm on the floor and I look up and I say to Herb Dean, I say, I'm not out. And he says, yeah, I know. Fight's not over. Fight's not over. Anderson Silver is convinced that this fight is over, but Herb Dean is saying it's not. I'm glad 
the third round happened. I'm glad I had to fight through that adversity. I'm glad that my face was falling apart and there was a, it was a total bloodbath. Some definite damage to Michael Bisping's nose, but that does not seem to be deterring him at all. He's not giving Anderson Silva an inch here. Oh, thrill kick from Anderson Silva! Because it makes it cooler. And if you, anytime you've got to fight through adversity and there's that kind of storyline, it just makes the fight way better. After we went backstage and we both needed stitches, and I was backstage and <laughs> I needed more stitches than Anderson, funnily enough. But on the other side of the curtain was Anderson. He was right there. We shook hands through the curtain, you know, but that was it, you know, it was all respect. Yeah, listen, Anderson Silva is a legend. He had a legendary career. He is in discussion for the greatest of all time. He finally got to measure his skills against the legend. And getting the win. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing feeling. I think what Anderson Silva accomplished can't really be put no words or measured with title defenses or, you know, championship belts. What we are looking at right here is a very unusual athlete, the kind that comes along once in a lifetime. I always describe him as a Michael Jordan of the sport, a generational type of fighter. He became kind of just like in everyday conversation where, you know, he's like, he's the Anderson Silva or something. This guy's striking is like a ballet of violence. And it also turns out he loves the sport, right? When you have a guy that's fighting in there in his 40s, it's because he loves the sport. He's doing something that he's truly passionate about. And I think that's a very cool thing. Good kick to the body. He heard him with that. He was one of those guys, and like an old school guy, fought Daniel Cormier, fought Israel Adesanya. Adesanya forced to retreat. When you go through his record, it's just champion after champion or challenger after challenger. Just barely, says Adesanya. I respect Anderson, I appreciate him, I appreciate what he did for my life. He changed my life, he gave me an opportunity. Whether he wanted to do it or not, he did it, and then he did it again. Whether he wanted to do it twice or not, he did it twice. And honestly, I wouldn't be doing this fucking interview if it wasn't for Anderson Silva. But Anderson Silva's earned the right, he's earned my respect. Um, every fighter should feel the same way. Wow, bows at the end of the round. How do you not love that guy? Listen, I wish Anderson all the best, I really do. And I want to say thank you for entertaining all the UFC fans for over the years and the performances that he put on. And I got to say, for, for that, you know, he will always have my respect. That is the greatest fighter of all time, period. Anderson the Spider Silva.